Engaging students in elementary and high schools has long posed a challenge, but today's landscape is more complex than ever. With smartphones, social media, and countless other distractions, many kids struggle to stay focused in the classroom. According to a recent Gallup poll, nearly half of Gen Z students in grades K to 12 report not feeling engaged in school. And of the kids surveyed, only 49% said their schoolwork challenged them. While a lack of interest in learning isn't new, the question remains, why are so many struggling to stay engaged? So it's hard to say exactly why issues of engagement seem to be worse now. The pandemic seems to be one part of that story with students' achievement and their social emotional health being lower than before. But even beyond the pandemic, the world is probably just a more stressful place. Things like social media, existential crises around climate change, an increasingly polarized society. And I'd say I'd add to that list, like the rapid pace of work and information exchange because of technology, all create stressors for students and teachers that interfere with students' engagement and teachers' effective support for it. That's Erica Patal. She says that many students have struggled to adjust to in-person learning after attending school online during the pandemic. Robin Lake, director of the Center on Reinventing Public Education, says that overall there has been a rise in the number of students experiencing mental health issues. We see this profound disconnect between the number of students who we think really need interventions and supports for mental health and the capacity that schools say they have to deliver on that. Right now, the average student-to-counselor ratio in the U.S. is more than 380 to 1. That's according to the American School Counselor Association. That really brings me to the conclusion that We need to get a lot more creative and sophisticated in how we deliver those supports, drawing on community resources, counselors, mental health providers, better integrating their supports with schools, but also not taking away from schools focus on learning and focused learning and high expectations. Lake says that without individual attention, many students end up falling through the cracks. For kids who are already suffering, bad grades can make their mental health even worse, creating a vicious cycle that's hard to escape. So if kids are falling back in academic success, which we know they are according to the test score data, they have fallen back quite a lot, that can be really dispiriting to young people who are not given the supports to get back on track academically, it can cause anxiety, it can cause them to not want to go to school and to feel more isolated. And it's not just students having a hard time, teachers are too. Reporting from Chalkbeat found teachers have experienced higher stress and lower morale since the start of the pandemic. And as more teachers have become burned out or left the profession, Remaining educators have had less time and training on how to keep students engaged in the classroom. Professor Erica Patel explains. We still see somewhere between like 40 and 50 percent of teachers indicating that they rarely or even never use certain key practices that we know are supportive of engagement. So strategies like providing choices or incorporating students' interests and goals into learning activities, contextualizing learning in terms of its significance to students' like real lives or being aware of students' cultures and promoting awareness of culture. And these are strategies that teachers report they use way less often across the nation. And over 40% of teachers that we've surveyed also report that they use some strategies that our research suggests can actually have undesirable effects on engagement. These are things like suppressing student perspectives or assigning a lot of busy work or emphasizing grades. Robin Lake says some schools have not been able to adjust in the post-pandemic world. Well, our schools haven't changed in decades, and the reality for kids has changed a lot. (laughs) Uh, That's part of the issue is public schools were built for sameness, and they haven't always kept up with how the world has changed. And so the traditional lectures and ways of accessing information 
are not always feel really exciting to young people, nor do they always feel really relevant. Uh, they might be questioning, you know, how is this going to help me get me a job or succeed in college? And that's not always clear. One potential way to engage with Gen Z students is to focus on subjects they are genuinely interested in learning about. Lake says schools should cover the core classes while also adding in topics they know students will be excited by. There are a lot of exciting things happening in the world that kids want to be tapping into. A lot of innovations out there, a lot of developments around AI, social justice issues around climate change and other things that they want to be engaging in, talking about, preparing for, figuring out how to be a problem solver. And the kind of rote curriculum that we've been delivering in our schools, they're not finding particularly exciting, relevant. It doesn't have to be that way, though. Students will check in, they will engage, they will show up if we give them really relevant and exciting material and challenging material, high expectations, and a lot of support. That's always key. In addition to revising the curriculum, Lake suggests schools should provide extracurriculars for students no matter what their passions are. Many kids are interested in fine arts, yet many schools are lacking in music, theater, and dance departments. She also says special attention should be given to students who are not planning to attend college. Though disengagement is a problem across the board, the Gallup poll found that certain groups of students are faring significantly worse than their peers. As Patal points out, this is not a new trend. There's a really long history of research and that suggests that some groups of students experience lower quality instruction and less support for their motivation and engagement in a variety of ways. This particularly applies to students of color and students from lower socioeconomic status backgrounds. Both Lake and Patal agree that schools and teachers have changes to make. But the work doesn't stop once the school day ends. For these reforms to be truly successful, Lake says students need to be supported at school and home. Support really, really matters, and the teacher can't provide all that support themselves. So parents are important to that equation, both in um, expectations and supporting dreams, but also providing support at home so that, you know, if kids are struggling Either the parent is going and really advocating on behalf of the student or finding a way to give them the support. Although educators and parents carry a lot of the responsibility, Lake says students also need to try to speak up for themselves and their needs. By advocating for themselves and their needs, researchers like Lake can work to find solutions before it's too late. Young people need to tell us what they need and need to be assertive and kind of demanding more relevant, more engaging, and more challenging school environments because it's their future and we want to be able to help make it possible. So we need youth support to be able to make that change. To find out more about Robin Lake, Erica Patel, and all our featured guests, visit viewpointsradio.org. For more behind the scenes, check out Viewpoints Radio on X, Facebook, and Instagram. This segment was written and produced by Grace Galanti. Our lead producer is Libby Foster. Studio production by Jason Dickey. I'm Gary Price.